Hi guys, I'm going to show you today how to make one of these. A peg joint on your shank, it glues inside your handle. If you put a piece of metal, like a threaded rod or something, inside here, you drill into the shank and you weaken it. It will also cause a stiffen point here, into the handle, which doesn't flex with the rest of the shank. And I get a lot of repair jobs in where that threaded rod has broken out, normally out of the shank, because it's not been done properly. I tend to use a traditional peg joint for fixing the heads to the shank, all glued up like that. It's a perfectly good, usable joint. A lot of people are frightened of doing it, or they've tried it in the car. So I'm just going to show you my method and see how you get on with it. So I've already got a shank here just to save time. I've marked off the depth. I'll use this blank handle to show you. I've drilled a 16 millimeter hole. That's about five eighths of an inch. Put your pencil inside it till it hits the bottom. Put your thumb up against it. That's your depth. I'm not measuring it. I don't have to transfer a measurement to there, to there. That's the measurement. And it, I've put a piece of masking tape around to give me a nice straight line to follow. I've also marked on the end, just using an old ferrule that fits inside, just fits in there. So I know that that is the size I want. So I've drawn that using a pencil, just drawn round it, and there's the circle I'm going to cut to. So I'm going to put that in my vise. Now any saw will work, I just tend to use a coping saw because I've, I've just used them for years and I get on with them. So I'm going to start off right on the edge of that tape put my fingernail on it and I just slide the sword down my fingernail. Just start it off, go a little bit round the back, a little bit round the front. Don't go too far or you will go offline. Now I want to see how deep I'm going. I'm just about a blade deep on this. This is useful because it does measure your, your depth as well. So I want to get down so that saw has just disappeared. Now I'm going to turn it round a little bit. Do a bit more. Always work on the top where you can see. Don't work round the sides or underneath because you will make mistakes. Just keep following that line. A bit at a time. Keep checking your depth. And now I can see the other line coming underneath here. It's going right the way around. And this next one will join them up. So now, finished with the saw, I'm going to chop out this with a rubber mallet and just an old kitchen knife. It doesn't have to be sharp because the mallet's going to give it the power. You can use your sharp carving knife if you want to, but you might damage the fine edge on it. So just use any old knife that you've got. Put it right on the pencil line. Be brave. Middle of the blade. Give it a thump with the mallet. Once you get to there, go onto the tip, put your finger behind it, just break it off. Next one, if you cut your circle round properly, that should just drop off anyway. Next one, cut 
out of those ridges off. Turn it round. Do the rest of it. If it's too tight, just put your thumb or your finger behind it, snap it off. Putting your thumb behind it stops it splitting any further than the line that you've cut. Same again. Just break it off. Take those ridges off. Right, so let's just see if I can get that onto there. Not quite, that's fine. I'd rather have it too tight than too loose. So I'm now gonna use my sharp carving knife and I'm gonna put my Kevlar glove on. I don't want to lose my fingers. Right, so I'm just going to take the last inch or so down, turn it round, always work on the top, wait and see. start to go on now it's just going don't force it because you can split the handle whatever you're using so you can see just gone on about there so I'm going to do the rest of it now and I tend to work more like a draw knife I, I hold the tip and I hold the handle another reason for using a glove so you can hold it and it worked back from that line that's been made by pushing the head on. Build up some shavings, push them forwards, go down with your knife, following that line. The line that you've cut with your saw. Turn it round. Come backwards. Again, be brave. You're not going to cut yourself doing it this way. You'll find the angle on the blade that, that cuts just by tilting it. Push your shavings away, cut behind, it should all fall off. Push them away. now. Tidy that one up. Now we should find the head goes on maybe halfway. Yeah, roughly halfway. Don't try and do it all in one go because you'll probably mess it up. So, from the line that we've created now, on the, roughly the halfway point. Again, just make some smaller shavings. Any that don't come off, push them away, cut behind. We're getting down to little bits now, so you're not gonna see big shavings coming up. Push them away. I know people have different ways of doing this and if you've got one that works better than this good use it I'm just showing you a way that I know works for those people who don't know how to do it we all adapt our old methods to suit the tools we've got and our method of working right let's see how far we go now Oh 
almost down there. That's normal. This will be a little bit of a shoulder. Can you see it sticking up there? I'm just going to trim that off. Tidying up any bits that I can see are sticking out more than the others. So we should now be about there. Now, if that's not going any further, and I know that there's nothing wrong with that peg, so the only thing that can be wrong is that peg's slightly too long. Which often happens, I only measured it with my thumb, didn't I? So all I do, take the edge off the very end. So carve it into a, a rough point and then nip off that point with the blade. You can do it with a saw if you want to, but it's just easier and quicker to do it. Do need a good sharp knife there. Let's see now. There we go. Right down. I'm going to take this tape off so we can see the edge better. Now a lot of people think this has damaged the stick. It doesn't look. All that comes off is that loose flaky dandruff that we call it. That's on the outside of the stick. And you're going to sand it off anyway. So don't worry about that bit. Just looking to see my best line of fit because you'll always find one way it fits better mm -hmm. than the rest. That's a pretty tight joint. So when you found your best line of fit, just mark it with a pencil or a bit of chalk or something. And now what I'm going to do is make a little glue channel. Very simple, tip of the knife forced in about a millimetre and a half, push it forwards, put another one on a slight angle, take out a thin sliver, that's all it is. And that just means when you put your glue in your, your socket, you get glue and air trapped in there and when you push it down if you don't take that little glue channel out the air bubble can act like a make it act like a piston and before the glue's set you can just push it off a little bit and you end up with a joint like that which we don't want putting that glue channel in allows all the glue and air to come pop 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 and it comes out and also by putting it there you know which round, which way around your head's going to go because you've marked it already. So that just needs gluing up and it's done. So have a go yourselves. Don't be frightened of it. There's nothing to worry about. Just practice a bit. You can practice on old, old bits of stick. Just cut pegs on them and see how you get on. Okay, cheers guys. Thank you.